From the Alex Trebek stage at Sony Picture Studios, this is Inside Jeopardy. There he is, the great Johnny Gilbert. Honestly, I've run out of superlative things to say about <laughs> his, his, his guitar work, but it really is. It, it literally puts me in the mood every single time we do this. Welcome back to Inside Jeopardy, your exclusive an official podcast destination for all things happening in the world of Jeopardy. I'm Michael Davies. I'm joined today by producer Sarah Foss and Buzzy Cohen. Hi. We're Happy back. to be here. We're in the pod. Let's do it. You know, as someone with no hair at all, can I just say that that both of you, your hair, both of you is looking <laughs> fantastic today. Buzzy, the way you managed to apply uh, your headphones and still make your hair, your little quaff, look so good. <laughs> Respect. We were literally just talking yes. before we hit record, before Johnny brought us in, about how we both need haircuts. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, well, uh, I cut my own hair. I buzz my own hair. It takes me about uh, two minutes. I've wow. been dealing. I was um, thinking a minute. That's a little. Over. Yeah. Yeah. What takes? So I know. Long? I I just went and saw my doctor. <laughs> I had PRP process oh, yeah, the your plasma replacement process on my shoulder, and it's been remarkable. And my doctor now wants to uh, put it in my head uh, ah. so that I can regrow my hair. <laughs> but uh, anybody who listens to my other podcast, Men in Blazers, uh, you will know that I regard that as bald denial. Any form of comb right. over, any form of hat wearing, any form of hair replacement, wig, anything is bald denial. I'm a proud bald. I enjoy it. I will not be using PRP on my head. Breaking news. That may make the sun. I'm just saying, Michael, <laughs> it's not actually someone else's hair. It's your own hair. So... It's Can't still bald still... denial. It was bald okay. denial. I uh, I've got a good shaped head. I'm doing yeah. absolutely fine. Thank goodness fine. you do have a nice dome. Nice dome that oh, you've got under your headphones. <laughs> okay, there is a lot going on in the yeah. world of Jeopardy. I don't know why I'm talking about my bald head. There's a lot more uh, important stuff going inside my head. Sarah said to me before today's podcast, she couldn't tell if I was frozen, as I have been many times uh, on the <laughs> internet today, or if I was just thinking very deeply. And uh, in the world of Jeopardy. Often, it's a very similar thing, being frozen <laughs> and thinking very hard. Love the clip that we were sent by our friends at TNT. Shaquille O'Neal played a game of Celebrity Jeopardy, lost it a little bit, was very upset on TNT Tuesday. He played against Candace Parker of our own Celebrity Jeopardy and Jamal Crawford, perhaps a future player on I Celebrity Jeopardy. I think so. I mean, Jamal coming on strong. Of course, he got the Who is Patton Oswalt clue, which yeah. upset Candace a bit. I think that they maybe wrote that just to remind her who she had lost to, but Jamal kind of was getting all the responses correct. So I think we have a future Celebrity Jeopardy invite and, coming your way. And as sort of the resident Jeopardy historian, I'm reminded of one of the great all-time celebrity players, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who absolutely dominated Celebrity Jeopardy when he played. Yeah, I think yeah. Shaq has eliminated himself from the running just <laughs> for poor sportsmanship on a fake version of Celebrity Jeopardy. But hey, you never know. Uh, talking of celebrity, I told you, Sarah, I ran into uh, Celebrity Jeopardy's Patton Oswalt last Friday night at Jimmy Kimmel's 20th anniversary. 20 years of the Jimmy Kimmel show. Unbelievable. I ran into Eliza Schlesinger there also. I do believe, you know, both immediately ran up to me. They would like to come back. They would like to be on the show again. And I love this idea that we can repeat celebrities, repeat our great celebrity players. I think that's a that's a really nice thing. Absolutely. We are doing that with our regular champions. You know, people enjoy watching them. Let's do it for our celebrities. Why not? Speaking of celebrities, Jimmy Fallon, he does a really funny bit on his show where he takes clues from the show and he combines it with incorrect responses. And he was talking about Jeopardy Masters, which everyone is. But he said these are the people who didn't make the cut. Ironically, Sam Buttrey was one of the contestants he featured responding incorrectly. But of course, it was just a little bit of editing magic. And Sam, in fact, saw it. And he said, me on Jimmy Fallon, trying to rock the house and failing miserably with a shout out to Cindy Pepper, because Cindy was also featured in that little spoof. Some of our contestants <laughs> don't like it. I think yeah. Biggest form of flattery, right? Absolutely. I saw Austin Rogers in there, uh, a pal of Jimmy's, I believe. Um, yeah, they're buds. Yeah, nothing funnier than comedy, I always say. <laughs> yeah. And did we also find out last week that Brendan Hunt had applied to be on regular Jeopardy before we put him onto Celebrity Jeopardy? That is true. He was in the pool. He was in the pool. He passed the initial test that they take at home. He went on to take a in-person test that he also passed. He played a mock gameplay. He was in the pool. You know, this is before Ted Lasso had actually 
debuted, but certainly had an acting career. You know, this just shows we have so many great contestants each year who pass our test, who pass all the necessary steps. They go into the pool. We only can allow three to 400 per season. I think he got a little busy since then, so he didn't <laughs> apply after his window had expired. But thankfully, he got the call for Celebrity Jeopardy. And as we'll talk about more, certainly prove that he is... Yeah. A celebrity standout. Sh- certainly shades of Matthew Weiner, who appeared as a regular contestant when he was out in L.A. trying to make it and then came back for Power Players, which was sort of a version of Celebrity Jeopardy after being, you know, a writer on The Sopranos and, of course, creator of Mad Men. Absolutely. You know, as you know, I like the idea of uh, crossing the streams of the celebrity world and regular world. I've I have floated the idea that that this year's celebrity champion will end up being invited potentially into the TOC next year. That seemed to get some people's attention. I like this idea. It's all jeopardy. Yes, we don't know who that person will be, but I nope. look forward to you perhaps extending the invitation to compete later this year in our TOC. It's it's already stacking up to be a pretty good one. Lots of talk about Masters. You revealed Mm -hmm. lots last week, Michael, and I've seen a lot of positive comments. People are liking where we're headed. They're liking the idea of the Jeopardy Invitational Tournament and having that opportunity, the too legit to quit Jeopardy, (laughs) that opportunity for some of our greater players from the past to feed in maybe people who didn't have the best performance the last time out on the Alex Trebek stage but deserve another chance on the stage. Lots to talk about, but we've also been talking about the audience Will there be an audience, Michael? Yeah, there will be an audience. I'm going to save this for a new feature that I'm putting at the end of this, where we take viewer (laughs) questions at the end. But I actually want to invert that. And I've got to tell you, the executive producer with my bald head hurting and being frozen half the time, I want to add some questions myself to the Inside Jeopardy audience to help me make the right decision. So I'm going to save that for a question I'm going to ask at the end to our audience, because I want some help in trying to figure out how we should fill the master's audience. All right. We're going to have to stay tuned for that, but it just shows how much Michael Davies is listening to all of you out there. Well, <laughs> let's get right into the game recap. So let's cue those beep boops. We kicked off the week with Yogesh Rout going for his fourth win against Katie Palumbo and Jimmy Daverin. What a game this was. I mean, Yogesh, obviously, he's got a little wind at his back, but Katie makes that move in double jeopardy, ends up in the lead, a triple stumper in final. It came down to wagering, it came down to wagering, and Katie beats Yogesh. I have to give Katie credit for that huge $8,000 daily double she did in Double Jeopardy to put her in contention. You know, it was all very strategic. Talking about that wagering, obviously Katie doing an unconventional conservative wager. It upheaves what Yogesh was planning with his wagering. Katie so excited that moments into the postgame chat, she finally I saw the moment where she realizes... She leans over to Jimmy with the great hair. A lot of love for Jimmy's hair on that show. (laughs) And she says, that number pays off my college debt. I'm completely out of college debt right now. And just seeing that moment and having her realize that, I don't know which was better for her, becoming a Jeopardy champion or being out of debt because of it, but a great moment to watch. I mentioned Jimmy's hair. I just want y'all to know that he tells us pure head and shoulders were used. Clinical strength. On that tape day, in wow. case you want hair uh, like and, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, and another triple stumper in Final Jeopardy, something I spoke about on the last episode of Inside Jeopardy. What is the correct balance? Is a triple stumper better than all three getting it right? My personal preference, one getting it right, two getting it wrong, potentially two getting it right, one getting it wrong. Of course, our friends over at J-Board, they got in touch. They've tracked the way that finals have played over the last three years. Every final, then Jeopardy's own Rocky did the math based on their list. of the time, all three get them correct. 35% of the time, two players get it correct. 34% of the time, one player gets it correct. 21%, all three get it wrong. J-Board, though, has it broken down in more detail. The last three seasons (laughs) of Jeopardy show the following FJ stats. I guess right, 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 that's going left to right. Who gets it right? 12%. Right, right, wrong. The contestant in the third podium gets it wrong, 14%. Um, <laughs> and every single way, WWW, wrong, wrong, wrong at 21%. Um, just phenomenal work by our friends over at J-Board. 
It's good to have friends at J-Board. Yeah, and uh, you know, I always, as a contestant, think you gotta bet everyone's getting it right, everyone's getting it wrong. This information could add some nuance to that approach. I think we also have to talk about Yogesh at this point. I, I gotta tell you, I love a character, I love a great quizzer on this show. We should say that Yogesh has received some criticism online saying that he lacks sportsmanship in his defeat. I like the fact that having been criticized, Yogesh took and defended himself, um, I would say, vigorously and mm. at length. Here's the thing. You know, Jeopardy is not beyond criticism. It is not a public accommodation. It's not a, it's not a utility. It's a business. And I do believe it serves a very important public need. But we're not beyond criticism. We don't make, as part of our eligibility requirements, that you have to come on the show and you've got to say lovely things about Jeopardy. We are a game and we want the best players coming on this game and playing their game. And look, I sometimes feel a little bit bad because we don't always prepare our contestants in the era of social media. We don't necessarily prepare them for, you know, how they're going to be challenged. I'm not saying that this goes to the level of attacks. We have had contestants in the past who have been attacked, but I say contestants who are going to be challenged. And just as I wouldn't take away the right of people within our viewing community to express things that they like and that they don't like, I wouldn't ever want to censor a contestant who defends himself, even if what he or she has to say is not always the most flattering to Jeopardy. This is all part of the public discourse. We've had some moments where I've had to even mention within uh, my newsletter that the discourse has dropped below a certain level, a certain quality, a certain way we want to speak about the show. I think all of our contestants deserve respect. If you've never played this game, if you've never been on this stage, I think it's very difficult to imagine the pressure you're under. And I think Yogesh made some good points within his lengthy responses that you don't see all of the contestant interaction mm -hmm. within a very tightly edited television program that we go and make. Anyway, I like a character. I like a good quizzer. And players like Yogesh, players of that quality, will always be welcome uh, on the Alex Trebek stage. Well, Yogesh certainly well known in the trivia community. You can't argue that. He's known as one of the best of the best, people have said. They couldn't believe he hadn't been on Jeopardy up until this point. As a three-game champion with a high total, who knows? We could see Yogesh back on the Alex Trebek stage. And you've heard it here first. Michael Davies will welcome that. <laughs> All right, we're heading on to Tuesday's game where Katie returned to defend against Vince Buchhenny and Stephanie Pakula. For me, this game kind of never quite found its legs. Uh, and I think that that is not uncommon after, you know, someone defeats a player like Yogesh, where it's sort of like the you're a little bit stunned. Um, and just trying to play. And, you know, not insane scores in the end of Double Jeopardy. Two misses on the daily doubles. Both Katie and Vince missing daily doubles in the Double Jeopardy round. But Vince was able to build that strong lead. And he nearly had a runaway by the end of the game. Another triple stumper in final. And Vince goes on to win. As the proxy for our contestants on Inside Jeopardy, I'm a proxy for a lot of things. Uh, but right now I will wear my hat of proxy for the contestants. Uh, a little bit of criticism on film Twitter about people missing the clue. The category was summing up the Spielberg movie, The Clue. Young cinema lover Sammy represents cinema lover Steven Spielberg. All three contestants missing the Fablemans. Um, my friend Austin Rogers already defending them on Twitter. This is making the run right now. For clarity, the episode was taped November 16th in 2022. The film had only been out for five days. Limited release only. Um, the writers create clues for months in advance. See Buzzy Austin Allen Re iPhone X. Yeah, tell us about the iPhone X. That yeah, happened so during your game, right? That was uh, our tournament of champions, and there was a clue about the 10th anniversary of the release of the iPhone. When the show aired, there had already been all of this hoopla about 10 years of iPhone or whatever, but when we taped, uh, none of that... Uh, it was 9 plus. It was 9 plus, <laughs> and there was no uh, PR about 10 years of iPhone, so we looked really dumb but you know that's what jeopardy's for making smart people yeah, it's look one of silly. the vagaries of uh, jpt jeopardy production time versus jeopardy airtime and it also speaks to the canon and there is certain with some forms of general knowledge they have a certain date where they are easier or harder sure. i always think about super bowls yeah uh, super bowl final scores very easy the day after sure 
you know, you ask two years later on the final score of a specific Super Bowl two and nobody knows. And, 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 and <laughs> you know, the time makes the level change. And I, I certainly in my preparation when there is something I didn't know, I go into uh, J Archive and see is this sort of a more current events moment? Was this something that was really in the discourse at that time? Or is this something that has really entered, as we call it, the Jeopardy canon? Um, so something for those of you preparing at home to think about. Let's move on to Wednesday's game, shall we? Let's move on. But I appreciate you bringing that up, Buzzy, because I think it's really important to understand. And the farther we get into the season, the further ahead we are in terms of JPT versus JAT. So we ask so much of our contestants. And I'm sure in the days leading up to their actual appearance on the show, they're not necessarily looking ahead to films that have just been released. So... Thanks for coming to their defense, Buzzy. Always. Always there for the people, the people of Jeopardy. All right, moving on to Wednesday, Aaron Portman going up against Alec Wang and our champion, Vince Bacani. This game certainly had some fight in it. Aaron led going into double Jeopardy with the help of that $3,600 true daily double. Um, Double Jeopardy, Vince missed the early true daily double, sending him back to zero. Um, early in the round, but he did fight his way back. Aaron ending up in control, still with about $6,000 ahead of Vince. Have to point out blank verse for 400. Candy is dandy, but blank is quicker. Vince responds, what is liquor? Boy, I could use some right now. And then at the end of the round, Ken joked, without even a shot of liquor, Vince has come back. But of course, we head into Final Jeopardy. Vince and Aaron are correct. Aaron, with some great earrings, even better earrings to come tomorrow, (laughs) goes on to be our new champion. She's back on Thursday to defend against Troy Meyer and Hillary Kotler. And I just have to talk about the earrings before we get into the game. The question mark, the exclamation point. They were so on point. Jeopardy, fashion. I've never seen better earwear on the show. Well, I'm happy to talk about this game because after Yogesh, Troy is certainly one of the top quizzers in the United States right now. One of those names that always comes up in yes. the current uh, pantheon, I would say. Maybe it's too too quick to say pantheon, but certainly of current trivia players, one of the names that is always on the top of the list. And one of those lists where they're saying, why haven't they been on Jeopardy? Yeah. Well, he is today. And boy, first round, Jeopardy round, They're nearly tied, Aaron and Troy, so she's right there with him. But coming into Double Jeopardy, you know, Aaron and Hillary, they gave great performances, but it was all Troy's. Impressive stats, a big $7,000 daily double. He secures his runaway game. Aaron actually the only one to come up with the correct response in final, but it didn't matter as the game was locked. Troy, very emotional in his post-game chat. He revealed that his mom had passed away recently. She was a huge fan of the show. It was a huge dream of hers for him to get on the show. And so from as long as he could remember, he said he would watch Jeopardy every night with his mom. All right, we're closing out the week with Troy Meyer going up against Eric Kerr-Hurley and Mark Fabros. Yeah, Mark had an impressive start hitting that $4,600 daily double and ending the Jeopardy round with a $3,000 lead. Yeah, you thought it was going to be his game, but Troy absolutely dominating in double Jeopardy. 19 correct responses. He gets both daily doubles heading into final it didn't matter he and mark were able to get the correct response but wow finishing the week just two games under his belt but an impressive total of sixty two thousand six hundred dollars our first repeat champion of the week two games two runaways looking good yeah it's looking like the trivia background i'm I'm tuning in tonight i do want to point out troy had a very impressive cheering section some of his trivia teammates Just to name a few, Brandon Blackwell, the lightning bolt from the chase with you, Buzzy. Also, Victoria Gross, the queen on the chase, and Susanna Brooks, who is known from Best Trivia Show Ever. So I have to think that when you come into a Jeopardy taping, you see Troy, but you also see that cheering section. Oh, my God. Slightly intimidating. All right, that's it for the week of shows on regular Jeopardy. But we also had a big week Last week, not only was Buzzy in the hot seat on the chase, yes. but also on Thursday night, Celebrity <laughs> Jeopardy was back. Our last quarterfinal game with Brendan Hunt, who we now know qualified for the regular Jeopardy, Kerry Champion, and BJ Novak. Yeah, I mean, it goes without saying that after qualifying for the regular show, Brendan certainly swept the floor with BJ and Kerry. He found all all six daily doubles got five of those six correct 
Um, no one got final Jeopardy, interestingly enough, but I wonder if Brendan told his contestants that he actually qualified for the regular show. Oh, I don't and think they so. just hung I their mean, buzzers maybe, up. maybe. Maybe if you admit that right away, you've Here, intimidated the competition so much. Yeah, I was so going to say, even if that's not true, if you're a celebrity coming on to Celebrity to Jeopardy, it. maybe just drop that. Just drop that right mm. before, you know, Mayim comes out. Oh, you know, I, I actually uh, qualified for the regular show. Oh, we're about to start. Okay. And just see, well, watch their, <laughs> their hopes fall to the floor. Well, I know BJ going into the show, I heard from a lot of uh, the connections of BJ Novak just how good he was at mm. the game, how much he watches. I think, you know, felt that he had a really good chance if he could get through his... Uh, quarterfinal carry we should say a last minute replacement she stepped in admirably at the last minute and 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 came and helped us out she's the star of the sports network i run with amazon amazon sports talk catch her every single day at 12 midday till 2 p.m eastern brendan though wow something else you know told us that you know he grew up you know, in a bar, literally watching the show and, and, and reading encyclopedias and, and reading trivia books. That was like a huge part of his of his background and his relationship with his mother was built around that. And wow, what a player. Hearing that, I want to say, Brendan, Google Gobble, one of us, welcome to the, uh, the clan of Jeopardy contestants. You certainly have that same background that so many of us have and it, uh, excited to see you be so successful on the show. And you could see that BJ was really trying to get in on so many of the clues. He just didn't have the rhythm on the buzzer. And we talk about it at length. You just can't say enough about how tricky it is. You don't just need to know the correct response. You have to be the first one to ring in. I know he was frustrated with his buzzer timing, but who knows? Maybe we could have him back as well. Yeah, and it's easy to get frustrated and that just further affect your ability to stay focused and mess up your buzzer timing. So I I feel for him because we see it happen. One of my favorite moments in the show was shoebiz for $600. The clue, like Elvis saying, don't you step on these shoes that you can get from Brooks Brothers. Carrie responded, suede shoes. Mayim said, yes, more specifically, blue suede shoes. All of a sudden, Brendan is holding up his shoes for the camera. He's wearing blue suede shoes. Then Carrie's pointing out that she has on some red bottom shoes. We know them as Louboutins. So the shoes were really represented well on that show. And poor BJ, he's like, what? What's <laughs> happening? And then we got to see Brendan's socks. And it just, it went on from there. A lot of fun in this episode. Can't wait to see the next game because that's going to be the semifinals. semifinals. Michael Sarah, Patton Oswalt, and Brendan Hunt. Exciting, exciting game. All right, and right after that, we're going to have our big finale on February 2nd for $1 million going to charity. We're moving on now to viewer questions. John asks, I have a question about something that hasn't happened in almost 39 seasons of Jeopardy programming. What happens if all three contestants finish in the negative at the end of the double jeopardy round obviously there would be no winner but how would the end of the show be handled would there be a final jeopardy anyway for the home audience to fill time or would ken or mayam have to ad-lib the last few minutes somehow well i can tell you there would not be a final jeopardy it is in the rule book the jeopardy bible as we call it it hasn't happened we hope it never happens but yes i think mayam or ken will be entertaining audiences for that time for that entire segment if it ever should come to pass, but I think we're, we're safe. Fingers crossed, will not ever happen. <laughs> I actually spoke about this with producer Rocky Schmidt just this week because this is a particular issue when we're in tournaments, that when we want to take tournament winners into the next round, and even in a tournament, even when we need a winner, we will go to the next best second place finisher in that case. Uh, Joe asks, are there any show supported methods of preparation for the show? such as a Jeopardy book or study guides, or is it all just user created? Well, Michael, you've been talking about this recently, that you wish that there was more of a a structured Jeopardy way for people to study. Historically, it's really come from former champions like Buzzy Cohen. Yeah, I I wrote an audio book called Get Ready um, about how I prepared to get on the show, as well as some other stuff. I interviewed some interesting people about how they prepared for high pressure situations. If it's certainly not show supported, but there's also Fritz Holznagel's amazing book, Secrets of the Buzzer. Um, there are tons of 
former contestants like myself out there on social media sharing their methods. And I would suggest, first and foremost, watch a lot of the show and then build your preparation methods off of that. Yeah, even when Troy Meyer, our new champion, was asked by Ken, you know, what do you attribute this success? He said, I watch a lot of Jeopardy. In addition, I think joining online trivia leagues like Learned League, Alex Jacobs has a school of trivia that a lot of the TOC and Second Chancers did, which they say really helped them prepare. There are so many resources, even if they aren't show supported, that are certainly aligned with the Jeopardy way yeah look i've talked a lot that i would like to build a jeopardy training module and i think that jeopardy training module you know can exist in a lot of forms i think it could be experiential i'd love the idea of a theme park attraction where you could go and you could actually play jeopardy against some of the greats and see how uh see how well you do i'd love to be able to offer some buzzer assistance some training in that yes some you know general knowledge jeopardy general knowledge guides some subject areas some tips from champions and people who've played the game really well uh this might be a little bit further down on um <laughs> our list of things that we want to achieve but uh yeah i've i think a lot about jeopardy training and all of those kind of things talking of our champions we are going to be taping our primetime series of jeopardy masters the dates are going to be at some point to be revealed in March and at some point to be revealed in April for a show that's going to air at some point to be uh, revealed in May. We can say that it looks like all 10 episodes are going to happen in the month of May, so it's going to have a fairly heavy primetime rotation. Uh, Certainly something that our post-production team are not delighted to hear from me this week and how quickly they've got to turn around these episodes. But the alternative would, of course, be to do it live, Sarah, which um, (laughs) which the more conservative (laughs) voices on staff have tried to talk me out of. So, um, but I have a question which I've been asked by my own senior management team, which is how are we going to deal with a studio audience on these shows? And what about the security fears that somebody will leak what happens and and, and leak the uh, winner? We should say that we, um, you know, we have audiences back for our regular shows now. I think audiences are really enjoying. We had a couple of wrinkles earlier on, but audiences are really enjoying uh, their experience at the show. Our celebrity audiences were superb and have really sort of added something to that primetime experience. On TOC... We restricted it a little bit because we were afraid of security and we sort of made invites just to friends and family and we didn't fill those audiences every single day and I sort of felt like the the shows were superb, the tournament didn't suffer, but some of the studio atmosphere and studio experience I think suffered. So I both want to have a full audience, but I also don't want to do anything dumb (laughs) and give away spoilers as to what happens because... In the era of social media, people leave that stage and go out on social media and reveal to everyone. So it's not like we're not trying to come up with some plans in studio, but I would be very interested from interested parties within the Inside Jeopardy uh, audience who uh, might advise me on how we can have a full audience, invite people to the audience and still have some kind of security control over what happens. There you go. The first executive (laughs) producer question from Michael Davies has been thrown out there. So we want to hear what you have to say about it. And that is it for today's show. We'll be back next Monday to discuss more gameplay and find out if Troy Meyer can secure that third win. And of course, we will be discussing the last semifinal Celebrity Jeopardy game with Michael Sarah, Patton Oswalt, and Brendan Hunt as we find out who will be heading to the finals. Fantastic, guys. As always, please make sure to subscribe to this podcast. Rate it. Even if you don't want to rate it positively, leave us a comment, <laughs> share across social follow us at jeopardy on twitter on instagram on facebook on youtube and on tiktok and if you have any ideas on how to solve my master's audience (laughs) dilemma please email us at inside jeopardy podcast at gmail.com see you next week then
For more great Jeopardy videos, hit the subscribe button below.